Let's Play is a slice of life romance webtoon about an introvert game developer and a handsome live streamer that unexpectedly developed an awkward relationship. And it sucks. This is yet another one of the biggest things there is on Webtoon. Well, it was up until the creator of the comic abandoned Webtoon altogether because the author wasn't getting paid enough. If you ask me personally after reading this garbage, however, I think the creator of this turd should be paying all of our fans for reading this because, boys, listen, this is easily one of the most cynical, cynical freaking comics I have ever read in my life. No exaggerations, no hyperbole. Keep in mind, I mean cynical in the sense Sense that this thing lacks absolutely zero form of passion or creativity behind it. This comic is the most soulless thing on earth. The story is basically non-existent. The characters have no personality outside of absolute baseline tropes required to make its juvenile user base appeal to said characters. The comic tries to use gamer lingo and good god it's the most cringe inducing junk on earth and as a whole this entire thing really does feel like some artist just sat down and memorized all the most basic tropes of garbage romance manhwas and just bundled it all up into one ultra generic webtoon. Boys, I cannot stress that enough, this entire piece of junk feels like it was built on a freaking assembly line, specifically designed to attract webtoon viewers' attention based off of a flowchart of baby's first romance tropes that come along with desperately trying to attract fans. What makes this comic so cynical and bad, you ask? Let's find out now. Before we get into this, I need to let you guys know two things. One, me and my partner Chalupa sat down and read this thing live for almost two hours. And while the comic itself is absolutely terrible, me and my boy managed to have a pretty good laugh about this for a pretty long time along the way. Sam! Sam! Guess what happened last night? <laughs> what were you going for? Middle Eastern or... Indian. Mexican. Oh, Indian. Indian. Hold on, you give me a second to, give me a second to tune it. You are in the brain. <laughs> you can you actually do it? No, I'm a trial, give me a second. <laughs> I can't, okay, okay, okay. Don't make me laugh, don't make me laugh. I'm saying nothing. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay. <laughs> Shut the f up. <laughs> you gotta do it, I can't do it, I can't do it. You are in the presence of a master <laughs> rank underwatch player. We, we were we were on fire, Sam. Winning one match after the next, we couldn't be stopped. It's the highest rank I have ever been. Look at him trying to look at him trying to draw the character interact with the 3D assets. <laughs> looks above the yeah. Uh, look at the look at how the background is just pure white on the right. <laughs> it looks like it looks like he's in heaven. Out. They he's died. In the He's in the f***ing void from goddamn Digital Circus. You're gonna be seeing some clips of these moments as this video progresses, and also the entire recording of us reading this thing is sitting on my Patreon page. Completely free to watch, by the way. So, if you want to see that thing, the link is in the description of this video. The second thing I'd like to inform you all of is that we have a sponsor for this video. Yeah, you want to see a Kickstarter for a comic that does not suck? Yeah, check this out right here. This video was brought to you in part by this sponsored comic, The Relentlessly Bullied Hero. This is a superhero action comic about a young hero struggling to save his city from superpowered villains, all while stuck in a contract with a powerful villainess that pesters him at every turn. Hence the title. Taking heavy influence from Japanese hits like My Hero Academia and iconic superhero TV shows, this entire 52-page debut of this comic series features an absolutely beautiful manga-inspired grayscale art style, fast-paced kinetic action scenes, and hand-drawn backgrounds, all perfectly bundled into a tight package of eye-popping entertainment. This comic is easily bound to be a must-read for all the folks out there looking for stylish characters and eye-catching action. You can find this comic on Kickstarter. Link in the description of this video. Support Relentlessly Bullied Hero now. Let's get started with this crappy comic. The story begins with an obnoxiously over-explained introduction into a female game developer's upbringing. An introduction like this would make perfect sense for, oh, say, a fantasy story or something where you gotta introduce your readers to the type of world that they live in, but in this, it kinda just seems a little bit pretentious. Uh, that's petty though, I'm not gonna harp on that. However, I will harp on pretty much everything else. To cut out all the fat of the stupid intro, what happened basically is this. This girl, by the name of Sam Young, created an indie title called Ruminate. A certain popular streamer played it and politely said that the game is bad, even though he actually didn't play the game correctly. His fans raided Sam's homepage where she hoped to develop a following for her indie game, review bombing her work, and thusly destroyed her opportunity to become a successful independent game developer. That's it. That, that's basically it. 
Man, this streamer guy sounds like a total jerk. Sure would be totally crazy if the guy turned out to be a super attractive, handsome, physically fit, socially capable man that actually has a heart of gold or something like that. And it would totally be an even bigger completely unexpected coincidence if that guy, if that exact guy, somehow moved into the exact same apartment complex as said girl. Okay, so yeah, you can tell where this nonsense is going. And past that introduction into the story, you are afterwards introduced to the art style of this webtoon. And yeah, it's, well, okay, it's not bad. In fact, it's actually quite good for the most part. The multiple problems that are dragging it down is that it's really, really generic. It's the most uninspired interpretation of the diet anime art style I have ever seen. Look, the art community is a very oversaturated market, right? So I've always personally believed that the primary objective of becoming a good and or popular artist is not to draw art of the highest quality quality, but instead to be the most unique. You have to stand out, otherwise you will simply not be remarkable, just like this entire ugly ass comic. Uh, Jesus, look at that. <laughs> is that a, that's a cat, right? Oh, that's a, that's a dog. That is a dog. Oh. A cat dog. Why does it have, why is, why does it have the fur? Okay. <laughs> it looks like a completely different art style. That looks like oh, something yeah. like a Diddy Phantom. And then, the, and then they got the Doge. I forgot about that. The Doge meme. Oh, post. Doge meme. Oh, nice. Ancient memes and zero humans remember. And yeah, this is where the ugly ass part comes in. The creator of this only ever draws the characters that need to be present. And whenever anything outside of only characters needs to be drawn, you are forced to feast your eyes on really, really ugly, out of place 3D models as placeholders. Boys, you already know for a fact that I absolutely despise 3D assets in webcomics, and it's even worse than usual here, because they clash with the art style three times harder than they do in other comics. And a lot of the time, the authors seem to think it'd be really, really smart to place said 3D assets right in your face in the foreground of these panels. It's really, really bad. Anyway, back to the story. The trike cliches recommends as Sam quickly recognizes this new person moving into her apartment complex as the guy who caused the review bombing of her work. And yeah, they have it out in the form of a very robotic argument where these two people try their damnest to sound like normally functioning human beings socializing. It may not shock you to find out that they fail at this. You're a game developer? That's awesome. Are you self-taught? What programming languages do you know? Do you work for a company? How long have you been a live developer? What games have you worked on? Ruminate. Ruminate? Oh, I see. In I suppose case, you're, I can't let you I suppose lose. you've seen my most recent video then. Oh boy. Look, um, part of my job is to properly review and critique games, and I'm not really known for sugarcoating things. Honestly, that review that the dude gave wasn't that like scathing. He was pretty polite it was, about everything. He like it was, uh, like uh, this is what I mean when I say that whoever made this comic has no idea how YouTubers, streamers, or gamers work. He was he was he was relatively kind there. I'm yeah, he was very polite. The problem, even if even if he didn't play the game correctly because it said it was yeah. a puzzle game the conflict was not the fact that he would he gave a not so positive review the conflict okay. was the fact that her shit got review bombed so this doesn't even this is really weird is what i'm trying to say oh, yeah she's, that's not even what he's basically a scapegoat for yeah. right now Though it is true he did play Ruminate incorrectly, it was Marshall's fans that took actions against Sam, not Marshall himself. It sounds more like his fans are to blame in this instance. Okay, so why don't you just confront him and talk to him about the whole he f you over with his fans thing. Yeah, you may notice that throughout this stilted argument, Sam and this douchebag streamer guy are speaking very awkwardly, almost as if they're verbally tap dancing around certain subject matters. That's because they are. Why doesn't this girl just explain to this guy that his fans mass raided her homepage for her video game immediately? No, seriously, why doesn't Sam just say, hey, you inadvertently sicked your fans on me and essentially ruined my life? Like, just why didn't she just say that right now? That would be what any normal human being would immediately do, considering that's the entire reason why she's angry at him, right? And then the dude could just explain to his fans that the game actually wasn't a piece of crap and that's actually his bad for not playing the game correctly. This insignificant conflict between this main pair is glaringly flimsy, and it's extremely easy to solve. And that's the issue. The reason why this very easy to resolve conflict is not being immediately taken care of is because 
because the creator of this comic obviously realizes that this would instantly destroy any form of tension in the story. This single conflict is quite literally the only form of drama and tension present, so the author can't instantly resolve this dilemma, because the creator still wants to add that cliche anime BS where they gotta have difficulties and be annoyed with each other at the start of their acquaintanceship, and the author wants the main girl to act all tsundere, and etc, etc. That is more interesting and entertaining for this idiot of an author, and well, that alone, there's, there's nothing wrong with that if that interests you more, but if you want to run that type of scenario where the characters start off hating each other, you have to produce a conflict that actually, you know, makes sense? So yeah, anyway, big shock, that scene does not solve that very simple conflict, and then the dilemma kind of just moves on with no form of logical conclusion. Afterwards, this stupid girl Sam pisses off to a local cafe to dry her tears. And when I say local cafe, I mean obnoxiously ugly freeware 3D model interior. Boys, seriously, look at how bad this looks. Look at it! Look at it, dude! Anyway, yeah, this idiot goes off to explain to the baristas what the heck just happened to her suddenly turbulent life, and oh boy, oh boy, I finally get to show you the most cringe-inducing thing about this entire comic. It's obnoxiously awful usage of gamer slang. A VTuber play, <laughs> a VTuber play <laughs> Ruminate, and I give it a bad review. <laughs> then his fans surge my, surge my indie dev surge by page, indie and they frag my developer rating to the point that my college has been flagged. <laughs> They totally fragged my developer rating. I tripped through some of these freaking gamer words. I, yes. I've never heard someone say the word Zerg in my life. I'm, yeah, that's not a thing that people say IRL. Only like Korean StarCraft nerds use that word. And zero humans say frag in general. Fra that's literally early 2000s unless, gamer speak. Unless you're like actual in the war. Frag out! Unless you're, unless it's the year 2005 and you're still playing fucking Unreal Tournament 3, then yeah, you should not be saying frag. Boys, I was originally just annoyed by this comic at the start, but as the absolutely ham-fisted geek culture was being jammed in at every single turn in the most disjointed way possible this shit triggered me to death dude this is martial law. his name is martial law yeah that's his actual that's his actual name that's his IRL just, name or is that his not, freaking if i'm not mistaken name? i think that's not just his youtube name but his actual name too god this pisses me off so much off the bat this is the most like surface level like oh this, th th you know what this is like this is like when like a fucking stupid ass like middle-aged boomer walks up to like like little kids in, in like elementary school and like hey guys i just look at me i'm a gamer fortnite and fidget spinners and tiktok emotes pay attention to me guys i'm martial law his name is martial law I can't. His name I, is I wasn't, Martial Law. You thought I was lying? See, look, I named the character in my story the fucking Bruce Lee character from Tekken. Look, I'm a gamer, guys. Look at me. <laughs> that's what's happening. His name is. That's why his name's Martial. I Law. call him Markiplier. That's a more yeah. fitting name. Whoa, gamer nice gamer callus. Do gamers even get callus? No, they don't. That's not a gamer callus. That's not how this. That's not how that works. But anyway, a callus like that can only be what the. F why? <laughs> it's not, why do they talk like this? This is not how human beings talk. I'm a more RPG. Even on Discord, they never talk like this. A callous, like, like this is how this is. You know what this is? You know how like in Naruto when they start using their jutsus and shit, and then and the, like one character has to like explain it out loud, like to to like talk about how cool their powers are. That's what <laughs> yeah, the yeah. this is. <laughs> A cow is like that can only be formed. Moba. Like an action or music in the background. Yeah. A cow is like that can only be from an FPS, a MOBA, or an MMO. MMO RPG, actually. I can hear the fucking Naruto music in the background. Da na 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 na. I, I I wish I knew the name of that song. Oh, would it be Wor World of War Quest? That's what it's called in this thing. Really? I. Oh my god, how, how do I even articulate this? Okay, this shit is like the Big Bang Theory. You know, that awful show that was on like, I think TBS, I don't remember, who cares? But yeah, it's just like that, where it's the most superficial interpretation of geek culture, just desperately trying to appeal to that type of crowd as hard as possible, and only showing off how incredibly pitiful you are by using words based off of cultural fads that are so insanely dated that it's legit embarrassing to witness. 
whiteness. Okay, uh, imagine if you met someone that said that they loved Mexican cuisine, and then you find out that they've only ever eaten f***ing burritos from Taco Bell. No, 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 let me give you another example. Imagine if you met someone that said that they're an expert in Japanese culture, and then you find out that they just have a goddamn katana collection, and they watched every episode of freaking Naruto. This is the webtoon equivalent of that. Y you get what I mean? Okay, so, you see how they're getting into the main plot, and it seems like something is about to actually happen? Yeah, well, think again, because now, more stupid pointless side characters appear. And the more pointless side characters show up and are introduced into the story, the more I realize that a lot of these characters look like they should just be from a generic hentai flash game that you'd find on Newgrounds. Have you noticed yet that this comic kind of just ADDs away from the main plot to meander through more additional side characters that no one cares about? Yeah, well, uh, get used to that. In this webtoon, character progression and plot points don't really progress so much as they kind of just get discarded like scrapped ideas in a notebook. Just like the webtoon boyfriends, it really does feel like the creator is saying, oh yeah, this is a slice of life comic, so that doesn't mean I actually have to try and make a cohesive story. And then kind of just makes up random stuff as she goes, because taking the time to plan out and produce a proper story requires effort. Between a non-stop barrage of canon fodder characters being introduced that do not matter, side characters very suddenly catching feelings for the main girl, and the most random, random ass moment moments where just out of nowhere the plot gets really sexual for no reason, it really does feel like the creator is kind of just drawing whatever she wants and then is kind of just like, oh yeah, that's right, I'm doing this to make a comic. Shit. Maybe if this was a series on Webtoon Canvas that some random dude was working on for fun, I wouldn't be so critical of that part. But just like with Lore Olympus, this is one of the most popular webtoons on the platform, so there's no excuse for issues this embarrassingly bad. I should think so. I rated in that game with a guild for years. What? Really? What was the last dungeon you rated? Hall of the Ultra Generic Bullshit. And now all of a sudden she's f***ing in love with her because this is how girls act. If they find out you have something in common that's like really stupid nerd shit, they automatically fall in love with you. Wait, wait, are you a Redditor and <laughs> you're a Discord admin? Yeah, I and I have 4,000 <sighs> karma. Will you let me put my PP pee -pee in you? Oh my gosh. Oh my... <laughs> And then she starts <laughs> taking off her shirt. All right. I, I think I've given you a good enough summarization of what you're getting into when you decide to read this junk, so I'll refrain from going on further. You see, Let's Play is a special kind of boring, in the sense that in order to really 100% explain why it's so boring, you yourself have to be a boring person in order to elaborate on it. And no offense to Chalupa, by the way. <laughs> I know he's made like five different videos on this. Uh, look, my point is this. I'm not going to try to be just as boring as this comic, so we're stopping here. This is what you are getting yourself into when you choose to read Let's Play, a plot that does not move because the author is prioritizing pointless side characters, an endless barrage of cringe-inducing dated memes and gaming references, and overall, a painfully dragged-out comic that's just about nothing. That seems like it was made less for the sake of wanting to make an interesting story, and more like it was just designed to generate money on Webtoon, however little you would get from that garbage-ass plot platform. You see, boys, that's what I mean when I say that this is the most cynical, soulless comic I have ever witnessed. Even in compa- no, no, no. Especially in comparison to all the other junk that I've read in the past. Lore Olympus may suck, I still think it's worse than this comic actually, but still, at the very least, there's some bits and change worth of passion behind it, because clearly the creator likes Greek mythology. Boyfriends may suck, but at the very least, you can tell there's passion behind that piece of crap because that webtoon's driving force is an artist that wants to perpetuate his homo-romantic, homo-erotic fantasies through his little Tumblr OCs. After my experience with reading this, however, this has no motivation or drive behind it whatsoever. This whole thing really does feel like someone just had a checklist of all the basic junk that you see in webtoons, and then the creator was just haphazardly tossing it into the comic. Main character desperately trying to appeal and relate to the majority demographic of readers? Check. Male lead being a hunky guy that you're intentionally supposed to start off disliking? Check. Obligatory cute sidekick character for the main girl? Check. Unnecessary side characters that don't matter and will never ever stick with you? Check. Characters that have to start off hating each other for some idiotic reason, usually the reason in question being something really dumb that can be resolved within minutes? Check. Obligatory love triangle? Check. Random sexual moments that only serve to keep the attention of ADD dumbass readers? Double check. <sighs>
boys, no exaggeration. This is one of the most soulless pieces of media I have ever ingested. And that is why Let's Play sucks. And that's all for this video, boys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. It's time for the Patreon Roll Call. My $10 supporters are Art Blocked, Candid Monkey, Jack G, Joseph Vincent, Kazu Cool, Klutzy Ninja Kitty, MCM 101, Mace Oratami, Pai Yan, Skyer, Sindrin 7, Spooky, Stormy Knight, and Vincent Lundy. And of course, let's not forget our $5 supporters. They are appreciated just as much as our $10 Patreons. If you'd like to be in the credits of my videos as well and have access to a small library of ad free, uncensored videos, all you gotta do is support me with $5 on Patreon. Thanks for watching, boys. We'll see you next time.